Hey, good afternoon, everybody. I want to just give you a little bit of a heads up on this particular dream. I've had this one since actually before January 2nd uh, through January 24th. And uh, I'm not going to read all of the headlines when I go through the dream. I'm going to read some of those headlines after I'm done. And the real intention, the way I'm doing this today is this. First of all, um, I want to share the dream, and then I want you folks to pray about it. I want you to pray through it, pray about it, pray about the headlines, pray about the things that I saw in the dream, um, and ask God for wisdom, ask God for direction. So here we go. Okay. The dream began with the flipping of newspapers and headlines, but one prominent number was heralded there, and that was being, that being $8 billion. Uh, every night of the dream, every single night of the dream, I saw the headlines that said 8 billion, population 8 billion. Sometimes it was just spelled out B-I-L-L-I-O-N, and other times it was the, 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 the words 8 billion and, and the number 8 billion. It kept appearing on the front page of the newspapers that I saw, okay? Uh, and they kept appearing on the front page as those papers, as they flipped from one page to another and from one newspaper to another. And I saw different places, Miami, Chicago, New York, Washington. Uh, D.C., uh, Indianapolis, uh, I, 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 I pastored in Terre Haute for nine years. I saw the, the headlines of the Tribune Star, the Terre Haute Tribune Star. So I saw different newspapers from around the nation. The other, headline, the other headlines began to appear with high crime, poverty, and world chaos highlighting those things that were going on. There were headlines about school violence, of Teachers locking themselves in their rooms and calling 911 to be rescued from marauding gangs of students intent on violence. Those were the kind of headlines that I saw. There were headlines of food shortages and starvation. There were uh, headlines of people leaving cities for the safety of rural communities, but those stuck in the cities arming themselves and barricading their homes and apartments. I saw highways lined up for miles with cars, with many running out of gas, and those families begging to get out of the area with people who still had gas. They were beating on the windows and saying, please let me in. I'll, I'll give you money. I'll give you this. I'll give you that. Please take me. Please take me with you. Then the headlines, the number 8 billion would appear again. I'd see people groups from around the world, from nations where the same chaos was occurring. <coughs> I saw people worldwide struggling to provide for themselves and to protect themselves. Crime was out of hand, headline-wise. One headline read, Washington paralyzed in nationwide crime wave. <clears throat> and then I saw a field, and it was full of people from the nations, different races, clothing, language, and, but they were all in a tight circle looking up at the sky but not moving. The headlines returned with these type of headlines, weather anomalies questioned, death rates unparalleled, unparalleled in 2023. And this was an interesting, college, went, college lost at sea. College lost at sea. And then the field returns in my sight, and the people would still be looking up, but with more expectation. One headline then stood out, banks becoming regionalized, 60% of bank branches to close by 2027. Another read, summer is not coming. As well as President Who. That's what the headline said. President Who with a couple question marks behind it. Then the field came back into view. And the people are stirring, but yet watching the sky. One other headline displayed, it stated, it said, mattresses useless now. Cash not worth hiding. Suddenly the atmosphere changed and the sky got extremely bright and I saw another field, but this one was full of goats and sheep. In just the last couple of months, I began to notice that the field behind the church, behind the, there's a little creek and then a bridge you go over and there's a little field back there. I began to notice months ago that they had dropped a lot of sheep back there. Not drop, but started raising the sheep back there. Sheep and cows. Haven't seen necessarily goats back there. But the field that I was seeing in this dream, it was jammed full of sheep and goats. And they were all just kind of intermingled out there. All kind of hanging around each other. But the sheep were white and the goats were gray. And the sheep were looking up and around and watching cautiously. In other words, 
all the sheep were aware of, they were watching, they'd, they'd eat, and then they'd put their heads back up and look around, look up. But they were cautious. They were not scared. They were not terrified. They were just cautious. They were, I would call it situational, <clears throat> situational awareness. The goats were eating and bumping into both other goats and the sheep. And the goats were oblivious to their surroundings and even seemed to be bothering the other animals around them. And there was a faint darkening of the skies. And that's when I saw the man that I see walk up to the gate at the front of the big field. He walked up quietly with a shepherd's staff in his right hand. He simply gazed at the animals within the fence. The goats paid no attention, but the sheep, the sheep began to walk towards the gate, some moving quicker than others. The shepherd opened the gate and very firmly said the word, come. Not loud, not soft, just come. It was a very, very firmly way of saying it. So he says, come. And at once, the sheep began lining up and walking out through the gate. The shepherd had moved the staff to his left hand and had knelt down to one knee. And as each sheep walked by, came near to him and began to pass by, he drew them near to him and he embraced them. So he's on his, he's on his, he's on his knee, staff in his left hand. And as the sheep come up, he embraces them with his right hand. And they begin to nuzzle. They begin to take his and rub up against that inner part of his, of his arm. Kind of where your floating rib would be. And then they went on. Now the shepherd kept his eyes on the gate. And here's the thing that really got my attention. As the sheep came near, he didn't look at the sheep. He kept his eyes on the gate. He would reach down. He would, he would just embrace the sheep and love on it. But he kept his eyes on the gate, watching what was coming through. Shepherd kept his eyes on the gate, embraced each sheep as it went by. And there was a goat that tried to get into the line. And the shepherd stood up, walked over, grabbed it by the horns, and slowly, simply walked it back to the area away from the gate. He then tapped the ground with the staff one time, pointed at the goats just like this. Tapped it, pointed at the goats. And just looked along that side where the goats were. He then walked back to the gate. And with his right hand waved the sheep in line on. And he said, come. Same, same, same attitude of voice. The same level of volume. And I watched. I watched as hundreds of sheep were embraced and passed by the shepherd. He then looked at me and he said, get ready to get in line for I'm coming soon. The spirit and the bride say, come. And I say, soon. If you've been to our prayer events or you watch our worship online, you know that one of the songs I love to have our, 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 our worship team sing is that song, Soon, by Daniel Amos. And so in the dream, when he said those words to me, I began to weep. I just began to cry because I love that song. I find myself singing that song a whole lot. Because the words are the same. The spirit and the bride say, come, and I say, soon. And when he said, I say, soon, the sheep began to dance and jump. And I heard, as it were, angelic voices Worshipping the God of the universe. It was just almost like surround sound around me. There was the voice of angels singing. And then the sky turned a brilliant white with a beautiful blue hue to it. And it woke up. I'm going to share now. That was the dream. That was the dream. But I want to share, that rather than put all of the headlines into the dream, because it would be, it would be almost like ad infinitum. I didn't want to just overwhelm people with the headlines. But I'm going to share with you now the other headlines that I saw. Just quickly run through them. 
Sex crime units overwhelmed in southern big cities. Rampant STDs killing elderly. The zombie apocalypse, hyphen, new drugs turning users into walking dead. Next headline. Who is killing the unelected movers in the political and medical world? Question mark. Next headline. Governments tracking assassination teams crossing borders. Now, this did not say American borders. This said governments, plural, plural. Governments tracking assassination teams crossing borders. Next headline I saw, gun grabs lead to standoffs nationwide. Another headline, cryptic headline, pagans are us, lead the polls. Underground spy network links Congress to White House. This is a very disturbing one for me, the next headline. Cancel the cross events hosted in Democratic cities. Next headline. Unholy trinity of D.C. leaders intends to erase morality definition. Next headline. Gates, WHO, and WC fixed standards slash medical tyranny on steroids. Next headline. Launched. Poke the bear, face incineration. And the last headline that I saw just from early this week. The West knows what it's doing. They have swallowed the pill and got it down with poison. So those are the headlines that I saw repeatedly over and over and over throughout the, the several weeks of the dream. Simply asking you to pray about these things. Commit solid, serious prayer time. But the most important thing to me was that Jesus said, I'm coming soon. The Spirit and the Bride say, come, and I say, soon. So, folks, we know that what's coming is not going to be good, going to be divisive, going to be sinister. But I'm thankful that the Lord will keep his hand upon us. So once again, folks, I challenge you, encourage you, pray through the dream, pray through the headlines, pray for insight, pray for wisdom. Share with me through realdanacoverstone at gmail.com or just in the comments, even next week when we're on. Uh, share what you see, share what you're, what you're sensing. I, had, I just had to think about it and pray through them and, and, and make sure I wanted to share them. Because... Uh, They'll indicate some difficult things coming. So pray, folks. I mean, really spend time praying about these dreams and what God shows you, what God reveals. Line them up with the word. Make sure they line up with the word, period. Anything that's going to be said or stated or come out is going to line up with the word and what we know of what the word says about where we are. So I'm just grateful that it's coming soon, folks. And that means stay ready. That means stay faithful. That means stay focused, okay? Now is not the time to allow your faith to uh, disintegrate or to compromise. Now is not the time. Now is not the time to walk away from absolute service to Jesus. Now is not the time to let the lost go. That there's that many lost people out there we've got to reach. We've got to reach them. So thank you for being a part of this today. Thanks for listening. Thanks for praying. More than anything, thank you for seeking the face of the Lord.